Okay. So for hypothesis testing, what you need to know is, uh, firstly, there is a H naught and H one. Let's talk about that first. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the H naught? Every question will give you an H naught and H one. You will basically have to, um. develop the H naught and the H1. So what's the H naught means is, this is basically the claim in the question. Okay. This is most probably going to be the claim in the question, or this is basically, we can call it either the claim or the current situation, okay? Okay. This um, H1, this is the alternative hypothesis. This is basically what we're testing, what we, are testing. All right. So for H naught, the P value or the mu or anything, there would be an equal to sign always. And H naught okay. will always have an equal to sign. Okay. Okay. But for uh, an alternative hypothesis, the H1, there's either going to be mu is greater than, mu is lesser than, they're going to tell you this in the question if it needs to be lesser or greater, okay? Okay. But sometimes they say there is a change. So when they use the word change, then there is mu equal to. Then we use the sign of equal to, okay? Equal to means it can be greater and it can be lesser, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, so now the next thing that we have to understand is the critical value, okay? Um, okay, wait. Um, so, okay. Now you'll be talking about the critical value. The critical value is basically the cutoff value, okay? So what does it mean? It is basically the rejection region, okay? So for example, I tell you, they're always going to give you a significance level region. Okay. So, um, okay. The, uh, the variable X is the number of correct answers or the uh, number of responses that we need. Let's take the example. I'm going to write an example over here and I'm going to explain the whole thing with that example, okay? So we're assuming that our X naught is P is equal to 0 0.25, which is the probability of Sarah guessing an answer, okay? Sarah guessing an answer. This is the probability of Sarah guessing an answer. Now, Sarah is saying that an answer. And if she doesn't guess an answer, she gets more correct answer. So the probability is greater than 0 0.25. This is going to be my H1, okay? okay. So in this case, <laughs> Uh, now, the number of answers that the Sarah is uh, uh, guessing correctly will be called X. X okay. is basically the number of answers that Sarah will be guessing correctly. Okay, okay. this is known as the test value. We call okay. X as the test value, okay? okay. So, the, uh, uh, to perform a hypothesis, you need to work out whether, whether the test value lies in the critical region or not. Okay, the whole test is basically dependent on what we're testing out is if this test value lies in the critical region or not. Okay, okay. so what is the critical region? The critical region is basically the rejection region. Okay, okay. so for example, um, I say this is the critical region. Okay, I will tell you how we get the critical region later. First, let's just assume that this is my number line, okay? Yeah. And this is the C. C is the critical value, okay? For example, I say C is six. So if Sarah makes, um, if Sarah makes more than six uh, incorrect responses, correct responses, I will say that the probability of Sarah uh, guessing the answer right is, uh, then I will be uh, rejecting the H naught, okay? Okay. So what 
this means basically is this is the critical region. The critical region is this. This is the rejection region. If okay. any value is above six, I will be rejecting H naught. For example, they say that when Sarah guesses, uh, she gets um, seven answers correct. Okay. okay. If she gets seven answers correct, then I will be saying that seven lies in the critical region. So I will be rejecting H naught and accepting the null hypothesis. Uh, I have okay. a question. Why is it not? Why is the critical region not below six and above six? Why is it not below this? You will understand this through your H, not in H1. So over here, you can see my H1 has the sign above. Yeah. This the question will tell you. When you read the question, you will understand if I have to above or below. No, now, when you have an above. I have a question. So the yeah. H1 basically tells you like what the critical region is going to like kind of represent, sort of. So because it was um, above six in that question, and here we have the above sign, that means yes. like that's gonna be the critical region. Yes. Over here I have the above sign, so this will give me the critical region. If this sign was below, and then the critical then region. Then I would be taking my critical region on the left hand side. I will so tell you this. I, for example, I have the critical region. This is my uh H naught right now. So I know. That whenever there is a above a greater than or lower lesser than sign, it is a one tailed test. Okay. So whenever there's a one tailed test, I'm only gonna take one side. When is there is an above sign, I'm going to be taking this side. So for this is my critical cutoff value will come over here. This is my critical region. Okay. okay. If my um sign is lesser than, I'm gonna take a left uh, left side and this would be my critical region if this is my cutoff value okay okay but for example if there's an equal to sign then my critical region would be between so it, it's going the cutoff value will be over here and over here so it's going to be both the sides okay okay this cutoff value how to find this out and how much this is going to be i'm going to explain it to you right now okay Understand this concept? Yeah, I do. I do, I do, I do. Whenever the value, whenever the x stat, uh, x statistic or x value, the test, the, the test statistic, whenever yeah. the test statistic or the test value, this okay. comes in the critical region, I will reject H not. We're basically testing for H not, okay? So when mm -hmm. I'm rejecting it not, alternate uh, automatically I'm accepting H one, which is the alternative mm -hmm. hypothesis, okay? okay? So basically H not and H one are completely opposites. So in mm -hmm. H not I'm saying my uh, probability is zero point two five. In H one I'm saying it's greater than zero point two five. So when when I'm when I get my answer over here, this basically over in this region, this will show that my probability is actually more than zero point two five, which is why I will reject H not and I'll accept H one. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, I get it. But if Makes it's sense? not in the test statistic, uh, then if it's you not in... reject reject no, H it... and accept H not. Yes, basically over here I'll be coloring this blue. This region, this is the acceptance region. So okay. in the blue region, you will be accepting H naught. Okay. Okay. So if the value, if it is not in the critical region, critical region is basically, uh, CR is basically the critical region, then it is in the, then it will be in the, acceptance region okay. that is why i will accept h naught and reject h1 basically what what this means basically is nyla just understand it theoretically the blue region that shows that the probability is 0 0.25 okay now the yellow region in this one 
shows that the probability is greater than 0 0.25. So if my actual test value is coming over here in the blue region, that means that shows me that the probability is actually 0 0.25. That is why I will accept H0. Understand? Yeah. Is it clear to you now? Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. I will talk about the significance level now. Okay. Let's talk about the significance level now. So the significance level is something that will be given to you in every question. In this, in every question, they're either going to give you, this is what they usually give. They either give a 1% significance level, a 5% significance level, or a 10%. They don't change from this, okay? So they're either going to give you a 1%, 5%, or 10% significance level. The significance level basically shows that after this level, this basically will help you calculate your critical Critical yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes. I can't hear you. Do you say something? No, no, I didn't. Can you hear me now? I can't hear you. Yeah, I can. Can you hear me now? But it's broken, but yes, it can hear me. Okay. Just give it a minute, it will get okay. Just give it a minute. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now let's talk about the significance level. The significance level will basically uh, uh, tell you the critical region. So, for example, it is 1%. So, the probability of the of this critical region would be 1%. If there is a 1% critical region, it's significance level, then this would be 1%. If it's 5%, it would be 5, 5%. So, what you need is basically you need to convert this percentage into a probability. So, 1% would be 0 0.01. So, then mm -hmm. you will need to know if it's a binomial expansion, if it's poison, or if it's normal. We will do the cases later. Do you understand till here? Do you understand what significance level means? Yeah, I do. It's just critical region, like the determination of the number. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay, now let's look at the third part. Let's look at this. But we always what have to convert mean? it into a decimal, right? Yes, you will always have to, because you need probability, right? Okay. We, t we always talk in terms of probability. Okay, so uh, this says acceptance. Uh, if, if your null hypothesis is, is accepted, then the test is not significant. However, if it's rejected, the test is significant. What does this mean? I don't know. This basically shows, Naila, that uh, originally, the current situation is that we have the probability as 0 0.25, right? Yeah. Now, I, I can't hear you. Situation testing out now. If my uh, can you hear me? Yeah, but it's a bit like broken. Okay, wait. Um, All right, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes. Okay. At any point, if you're not able to hear me, just let me know, okay? Okay. 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 All right, so can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay, so Naila, the uh, this the H naught is basically my current situation, right? So the current situation says that my probability is 0 0.25. And I'm testing for if the probability is greater than 0 
So in conclusion, when I conclude this question, and I get that the probability is actually 0 0.25 and I'm accepting it's not. Then there's nothing new that I'm discovering, right? I'm just saying that the current situation is true, which is why the test will not be significant, right? Because we were act we we're actually just stating what we already knew, right? Which is why when mm -hmm. we accept it's not, we say that the they sometimes ask you in a question for like a mark or two. They say, was the test significant or not? So if you're accepting H0, you will say that the test was not significant. But if I'm accepting H1, I will actually be discovering some new information, right? This is something new that I'll be proving, basically. So I will say that the yeah. test is significant. This is some just a small point to know, okay? Now let's look at the third thing. What can you repeat that? I didn't understand. You didn't understand? No. Okay, so for example, I tell you uh, the probability of uh, a student getting an A star is 0 0.25, okay? But a new, um, but uh, for example, you say, no, I think it's greater than 0 0.25, okay? So H naught would be P is equal to 0 0.25, which is actually a fact, okay? okay. But now Nyla is saying that it's greater than 0 0.25. So my H1 would be greater than 0 0.25, which I'm testing out. It's a claim that okay. I'm testing out, okay? So now if in the, in the end, I find out the answer that no, it is actually 0 0.25 and H0 is true. I accept it again. So I will not be uh, find, uh, discovering anything new, right? This is something yeah, that no. we really knew, right? This was a fact, yeah. right? But yeah. so it would not be a significant test, right? But no. if I prove that your claim, if I prove that it is greater than 0 0.25, this is something mm. which would be a new discovery, right? Which is yes. why the test would be significant. Understand? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. So in the conclusion, we have to write if it's significant or not, or do we just leave it? Yes. In say? the conclusion, you have to write if it's uh, significant or not, no, right? No, no, not uh, particularly. If they ask you specifically that if it's, is this test significant or not, then you tell them, okay? Okay, fine. Okay, now let's look at the third point. Okay, the null hypothesis is H0. Okay, we already talked about this. The alternative hypothesis also we talked about. This is not a claim. I just need to add something over here. So this is our current situation, okay? Are you making notes? Yep, I am. Perfect. Uh, if you get stuck somewhere, please ask me there and then, Naila. I know this is okay. a pretty confusing topic, but this explanation is very important and then only we will be able to uh, move on to the questions, okay? Okay. All right. So, uh, alternative hypothesis, H1. Okay, we've talked about this. Okay, let's talk about this. So, whenever they give you a, a, a word which says change. Okay. Okay, then you will, uh, it changes, right? So, you will write down is not equal to in the, alternative hypothesis. So over here, when I said it's equal to, it's not actually equal to, where did I say? When At the top, even I was confused. Punted and two-tailed test, we basically say it's not equal to, okay? Because our, uh, our H naught would say equal to, our alternative would say not equal to. For example, our uh, I give you a question, um, Again, let's talk about the same example that uh, the probability of getting an A star is, for example, 0 0.25. Okay. But now uh, it has changed. So when the word changed comes in your question, the word changed mm -hmm. comes. Yes. Then what would you write? Your alternative will be not equal to. So then you will perform a two-tailed test. Okay? Yeah. Okay. This, this would be your indication for a two-tailed test. Okay? Okay. 
Okay, this okay, perfect. Pardon. This is actually what we discussed in the last class. Okay. All right. Uh, test statistics. Um, the test statistic will be the number they've given you, which we need to test out. And the critical region we talked about. Okay. Let's talk about the significance level. Okay. Okay. For example, uh, my null hypothesis is my alternate uh, null hypothesis is p is equal to 0 0.25 and alternative is p is greater than 0 0.25 let's talk about this okay, okay. so when i uh, in binomial and in poisson you're going to make a number line but when it's normal you're going to make the um, okay. bell curve okay Okay. That we used to make in normal, okay? Okay. All right. So let's talk about this first, uh, binomial and Poisson, okay? So I'll make a number line, okay? So my, uh, they've given me the, uh, the significance level as 5%, for example. 5%, for example, just give me a minute. Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's continue. All right, so we were saying that, okay, we're going to talk about a number line. Um, where, okay, this is my number line. They're giving me the significance level of 5%. That means my critical region is of 5%, all right? Okay. okay. So, and it's a upper tail test, right? Yeah. Because there's a greater than sign. So for example, this is 5%. This is my cutoff value, okay? Okay, so this mm -hmm. region needs to be, the probability of this region needs to be 0 0.05. So one thing that you need to remember, Naila, you need to take out the value of this, right? The critical region, you need to uh, take out the value, of the, basically the cutoff value needs to come here. To take out the cutoff value in binomial and poison, you do. Um, you basically have to uh, do uh, trial and error, okay? okay? In trial and error, what we do is, I need to calculate, for example, my uh, they've given me uh, the binomial expansion where I have 10 over here. This is the number of trials and my success probability is this. 0 0.25 okay you remember yeah. binomial right yeah yeah yes so this is my success probability and the, the total number of trials is 10 so now i will have to calculate till when i'm getting five percent okay then after five okay. percent would be over here so can you calculate when you're getting five percent can you do uh n is equal to one and then uh, two three four can you do that it has to be cumulative? Yes. Can I just do it on the calculator? Yes, yes, do it on the calculator. When you're getting a five, a 0 0.05, or like you're crossing that, tell me, just before that we need to stop. Uh, what's the probability again? 0 point to what? 10 and 0 0.25. 10 is the number okay. of trials. Probability of success is 0 0.25. It's 1. What is 1? The answer is 1. What are you getting at 1? The va the answer is 1. The cutoff value is 1, I think. What did you get your answer as? So I put um x 10 and n is equal to 1 and probability is 0 0.25. And yeah. the probability is 1. No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you to do binomial expansion of x is equal to 1. 
where you have the binomial 10 and 0 0.25. So do you remember binomial expansion you used to do 10C0P to the oh, power? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that we used to have to do. You have to expand it. Okay, for you want me to do it like for all of the values, for all 10? First, let's start with one. Okay, they, they've given us a upper tail test, right? So we yeah. have to, uh, so it's better you do, um, it's basically trial and error. So you have to do X uh, is one, and then you add the two, you add the three, you add the four, that's how we do it. Isn't that just cumulative, which is what I did? You did, what did you do? I don't know what you did. So I on the calculator, I did cumulative binomial. Yeah. And then it says, Put in an x value. I put 10 as my x value. For my n value, I put 1. And then for the probability, I put 0 0.25. Okay. And then it gave, gave me a value of 1. They gave you a value of 1. You have to do yeah. an upper tail test. So it's better you start with... Um, how can it be 1? It's not possible, right? The whole value is 1. The binomial in binomial expansion, the whole value is 1. Probability can never exceed one. I don't know what you did. I told you. It's not possible for a value to be one. Okay, let's. Uh, acha, okay, let's do one thing. Leave this. Okay, I'm gonna do this with a question. Right now, what I just need to you to understand is this. Okay, so what mm -hmm. we do over here is we do trial and error. By trial and error, what I mean is it's an upper tail test. So you will be needing to do the upper tail right for example i have 10 as my um uh, total number of uh, trials right so i, I will yeah. have to do 10 9 8 i'm going to add these and see if it's coming more than 0 0.05 but if, why am i doing this because 10 is over here 9 is over here 7 is over here 8 is over here i need this value okay so can you do this mm -hmm. let's do this actually so how do you find mm -hmm. out uh, the probability for 10 trials? Don't do this calculator thing, Naila. I don't know what you're doing. Just do the normal thing that we do, okay? Follow those steps. So for uh, uh, x is equal to 10, what do we do? 10 C1. Yeah, no, x is equal to 10, so 10 trials. 10 C10. Okay, that's one. Yes, then, then p to the power um, nine. Yeah. Which is P and then, is what? Uh, 0 0.25. Yes, and Q is 0 0.75. Uh, 0 0.75. It's in 75, 0, 6, 5. It's 6, 5, right? No, 75, 0 0.75. 1 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, 0 0.75 to the power 10. So can you no, put shouldn't it be to the power one? No, because I have 10 over here. We always okay. put R over here, right? Okay. I'm doing the last uh, uh, trial first. And then you take out 9, you take out 8, then you add all of this. Let's do it. Just tell me the answers, okay? Okay. Also, Naila, I think I need you to revise these things. So I will be giving you some... Uh, questions are actually fast paper questions for S2 now, okay? Okay. This is actually going to be zero, right? What? This, this needs to be N minus R. So 10 minus 10 is zero. 10 minus 9 is 1. 7, 5, 9. Do you remember the a formula for binomial? It's NCR. Yeah, it's NCR and then N Q to the power of N minus R and then Q to the power of R. Yes, this is the formula. We need to remember this. Okay, just tell me the answers. One second, I'm doing this. And honestly, don't do the thing you did, okay? In your paper, don't do, take any risks. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
one second. So it's 10, C, eight. Just tell me the answer for the first one. Oh, it went. I'm just giving you the total answer. No, don't give me the total answer because I even I need to explain you something. Okay. I'm gonna do for ten. Give me the answer for nine, okay? Okay. okay. And give it to at least uh three significant figures. Okay. It's zero point one eight eight. Okay. Then one second doing the last one. It's zero point two eight two. Two eight what? Two. Two. Okay, uh, let's calculate these. Can we add these now? Just tell me the answer. Add all of them or and tell me. Five, six. Okay. It's uh, 0 0.5263. 0 0.5263. 0 0.0563. 0 0.1203. What did you add? I added 0 0.188, 0 0.282, and 0 0.0560. Okay, okay, okay. 0 0.526? 3. Yes. Okay, the thing is, I think I've given you a wrong... Um, this is a question I'm making, so that's why it's not perfect. I'll just uh, change the significance level to 10%, okay? So I need to get the probability of 0 0.1 over here, okay. all right, okay. for the critical region. So this is uh, exceeding, right? No, so it can't be these three. Okay. What's so let's the add... alternative hypothesis to this? It's greater than 0 0.25. Okay. Okay. So it's not in the region. This is not in the region. Let's see which one is in the region. So if I add uh, eight, uh, ten, and nine. Okay. So it's going to give me greater than zero point one zero, obviously. So my critical yeah. region would be this only. Ten is my critical region, right? Yep. Because this is falling under zero point one zero. So do you see? Now I need you to understand. This is something very important that I need you to understand. They're saying the critical region is ten percent. But my actual cutoff value that I'm getting in this question is 10, which is much less than the value that they've given me. So this critical region actually is 0 0.0563. This is the probability of the critical region. And my cutoff value is 10. Understand? Yeah. In binomial and Poisson, the significance level never tells you the true critical region. That is why you need to tell you the uh, you need to do the trial and error method to find out what value actually lies in the significance level and what the value of the significance level actually is. You understand? Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. So you understand the cutoff value is 10. So the critical okay. region starts at 10. Okay. Any okay. value under 10 would give me my acceptance region. Right? So that would be so accepted. Basically, you have to do trial and error to find the cutoff value. Yes. To okay. find the cutoff value, you do the trial and error. Now, okay. now, do you remember we talked about the test statistics? So, for example, they say that uh, uh, the cutoff value is just going to say like this. Uh, in um, They're going to give you an example of the sample, basically where they're going to say we did nine trials. So now they're going to ask you in this X9, does it lie in the critical region or not? So we found out that the critical region is X is equal to 10, right? Greater than equal to 10. Okay. 
So uh, our test statistic. Now, how will we tell them uh, that uh, we are accepting it? Uh, we are basically accept accepting H0, right? Because nine is our test statistic, which lies in the acceptance region. Yes? Yes. So our test statistic is basically lesser than our critical va uh, cutoff value. So we're going to write x is equal to 9 is less than x is equal to 10, which is why we accept h naught. Or what you will do, or you will do, you will basically find out the probability of x is equal to 9. Okay. And then, for example, whatever probability you get, it's going to be lesser than this. Okay. When you get that probability, you're going to show that this probability is less than this. Which is why we accept touch not. Do you understand? Yeah. It's going to be the same for Poisson and binomial. But for normal, we use the bell curve. And we and for normal, the significance level is equal to the cutoff region. Okay? It's equal to okay. the critical region. We don't have to do trial and error because we have the table. Okay? okay. So, for example, if we have the cutoff uh, significance level as 5% even, what can I do? I can just use this probability look in the uh, graph or table and I can find out the probability, right? I can yeah. find out the Z value for this from the table, right? This yeah. is my probability. I can use the backward uh, method and find out the Z value. Do you remember the backward method? Yeah, yeah, I do. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I do. You just have to look at the table. Yes. Now I'm going to do some... Uh, examples in front of you so you can understand this con these concepts better okay mm -hmm. first i need you to write this down actually we're going to make some notes okay, okay. i'm going to tell you the procedure for carrying out hypothesis we're going to follow this in every question no matter what okay okay because there are step marks for steps so you can't just do it in a blur and just write anything okay so Okay, first step. The first step is to define the variable. How do you define the variable? Uh, uh, you have to do H1 and H0 to decide the hypothesis. No, define. That would come later. First, you need to understand if it's a normal distribution, it's a binomial, mm. it's a Poisson. You need to understand that. So for uh, defining the variable in any question would mean, for example, it's a binomial. I'd say X follows a binomial distribution of 20 and P. Okay. Okay? Like this. Now, my second step would be second step would be to State H naught and H one. So, for example, I say H naught is P is equal to zero point two five, and H one is. You need to clearly state this in your question. Okay. Okay. Okay, and I can also write down this in my brackets. For example, in the guessing question where Sarah was guessing. I can write Sarah is guessing in this question, in this uh, hypothesis. And when she is not guessing, this is the probability. To make it clear for myself, basically, okay? Okay. Do, do I have to write that or can I just not? You cannot, but sometimes they ask you for a conclusion. So when we reach to that part, it sometimes get, gets confusing when we, we don't have this written. It's just okay. for your clarity, okay? Okay. Then you... <clears throat> You state the distribution. 
Didn't you already state that in the variable? No, I'm going to tell you what this means. According to H0. So you state the distribution according to H0. For example, I say, if H0 will be true, X would follow a binomial distribution where this is 20 and this would be 0 0.25. So basically, this is something that we're assuming. We're assuming in this whole question, there is a big assumption that right now H0 is true, right? We don't know if it's true or not. We need to prove <coughs> this, right? We're proving okay. it with the question. So now in the third part, you will, you're going to write that assuming H0 is true, this is the distribution. Do you see in the first part, I wrote 20 and P. I did not write the probability. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I get that. But I have a question. In uh, two-tailed, when it's, there's a change, do you still have to write assuming that? Because you know it's true, but you know it just changed. Um. What do you mean? Do you still have to write if H0 will be true in a two-tailed um, two Yes, test? yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes, it, it, this is basically your in the whole question, the probability that you're taking would be 0 0.25, right? Yeah. So you're basing your entire question on the fact that H0 is true, basically, because you're taking 0 0.25 as your probability. Otherwise, okay. you would be taking something else, right? Okay. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's write the fourth step. Okay. Okay, the fourth step would be um basically okay um say the level and type of test you state the level so whenever we'll be doing questions we will keep this in front of us okay and eventually we'll just get a hang of it. So you say the level and light type of test. So what does this mean? For example, if H if H one has a greater sign, we use a we do a upper tail test, right? at the significance level example 5% level okay so what will you write down basically you will be writing down that you are conducting this is an example so you for example I'll be writing down an upper tail test at whatever significance level they've given you, 5% level. What's an upper tail test? Upper tail would be the upper level. Whenever there's a greater sign, you do an upper tail test. When there's a lesser sign, you do a lesser, le uh, lower tail test. Okay. Remember okay. over here, we were talking yeah, about- yeah, yeah. yeah, I got it. Yes, this is the lower tail, this is the upper tail. Okay. Now the fifth part, would be um page uh, then you state fifth would be you state the rejection region now over here you say i will reject h not if probability is greater than equal to whatever the critical cutoff value is okay? okay is less than this now this is this will be the x statistic basically test value basically okay this x is the test value so if my significance level is 5% and 
and my probability for the statistic is lesser than the significance level, I will reject H naught. Okay. 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 So for example, I have my significance level as 5%. And my probability x is greater than 9 is 4%. So can you see 4% is less than 5%? So what will happen? I will reject H0. Why? Because my test probability of the test statistic is less than the significance level. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, can I just write it down? Give me one second. Yeah. Is this the last step? No. This seems like a lot of steps, but it's not that much, honestly, when you have a question in front of you. Right now, you don't have any values, right, to work with, which is why it's getting a little confusing and it's like, okay. Okay. Okay, now let's talk about the sixth step. Let me just shift it over here if I have space. Okay. The sixth step would be to calculate the required probability. Now comes in the calculation part. So now you were just telling them what you will be doing in the question. The actual part comes over here. For example, if x is equal to 7. Then you find probability x is greater than or equal to 7. So you do probability x is greater than or equal to 7. For that, you can do 1 minus probability of 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 dot. Let's say 21% comes. This is an assumption. Okay, basically this is the probability you're finding out, the X statistic probability, okay? So let's say then in the last, this is the going to be your step where you make the conclusion now. Okay. So for example, this, would, this is the probability I found out. Now I make the conclusion. So I'm going to say, Given that probability of x is greater than or equal to 7 is equal to 21%, which is greater than 5%, my significance level. The test value is not in the critical region. So I reject H1 and accept H0. Understand? So the probability of the test statistic was greater than 0 0.05, which was my significance level. To accept, uh, to reject the H0, it needs to be le uh, lesser than 5%, five, 5 okay? Which is why I accept H0 in this question. You understand? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question. What did you write after 21? There's like a, like a dash and then you wrote something, but I don't, I can't understand what uh, where what's the dash? Uh, in blue, you wrote twenty one percent, and then something after that. This is the greater this. This. No, ab above like twenty one percent in blue. Twenty one percent. It's just I just made a dash like this is a hyphen. I just made it for the assumption. 
Okay. I'm just telling you that I'm assuming this. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so you understand these steps? Yeah, can you do a question? Yes, now let's do a question. Just give me a minute, okay? No Okay, I want you to understand one thing before we move on to the question. Okay. okay. Just one thing and then we're going to do one question. Okay. So, uh, did you see I wrote whenever the probability of the X statistic is less yeah. than this. Uh, for example, my X statistic I've given you as 9, okay? So whenever okay. the this is the cutoff value. So what whenever the value of the uh no this is not the cutoff value. This is my x statistic. Okay. Okay. So whenever if my uh, x statistic and I'm performing a lower tail test. Okay. So okay. when this is uh lesser than equal to nine uh, nine is lesser than my significance level. For example, I take it as five percent. I will always be. So I'll be rejecting H naught in this case. Okay. Why is that? Do you understand the concept behind it? Um, is it because... I'm just going to explain your concept. I think you will understand. Okay. So for example, my cutoff value is... Uh, uh, my critical region is 5%, okay? This is 5%, okay. okay? Now I'm saying the probability of 9, this is, I'm saying 5%, 0 0.05, okay? So the okay. probability of less than equal to 9 is less than 5%. This means if this is 5% and less than equal to 9, that means we're going left side, this is less than 5% means this 9 is 9 somewhere inside the 5%, right? Yeah. To have a less than value of less than 5%, you need to be inside the critical region. Hmm. You understand? Not really, no. Not really? Okay, wait. For example, I say uh, the cutoff value is 11. So at 11, I have less, uh, lesser than 11 is 5%, 0 0.05, okay? okay? Now I ask you, to, now suppose we don't know this 11 value, but right now I'm just telling you to understand, okay? Now I'm asking mm -hmm. you to find out if 9 is in the critical region or not, okay? For 9 to be in the critical region, if, for, if I say 9 is in the critical region, it would mean that the probability of less than equal to 9 needs to be less than 5%, right? Yeah. Why? Because if it's in the critical region, this much is 5%. So if it's, for example, 4%, 4% is 
So this this means obviously it's gonna be inside the critical region, right? Yeah. But nine is over here. If nine is over here, it's going to be more than five percent, obviously, because less than uh nine, the probability of less than nine would be, for example, seven percent. Mm. Right? So that shows that nine is outside the critical region. Do you understand this now? Yeah. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, so it's outside, that's why you, you reject H0, right? When it's inside, you ex reject H0. When it's outside, you accept H0. Okay, let me just write that down. Okay, just write this down. If, if the value... No, no, just write it down. No, I wrote it down. A test statistic, test value comes in critical region. You reject H0 and accept H1. Yes. To accept H naught, just write this down. So if you want to accept H naught, the value of either less than check the test statistic or the probability or greater than test statistic. It needs to be lesser than it needs to be greater than five percent. Greater then significance level. You understand this? Uh, no. Can you please explain? Yes. Okay. For example, I say my significance level is five percent. Tell me what mm -hmm. this means. For example, I have a uh H one as P is greater than zero point two five. Okay, and my significance level is five percent. What does this 5% show? Can you tell me? Um, yeah, it shows your critical region. Yes. So, and critical region is going to be where? On the right-hand side or on the left-hand side? Is it an upper tail test or lower tail? A uh, lower tail? Sorry, upper tail? There's a greater than sign. Yeah, so it's upper tail. Upper tail, okay. So my critical region would be on the right-hand side, right? Yes. So this, this region is going to be 5%, right? Yeah. This is 5%. So 5% or probability is 0 0.05. So the probability okay. is 0 0.05. It starts from here to here. This is 0 0.05. So now if I'm saying that my x statistic I've given you x is equal to 9. This is my test value. Now you find out whenever I've given x is equal to 9, you will find out the probability for x is greater than or equal to 9. So for example, 9 is over here. You can get this whole probability. So you can compare the significance level, the significance probability, and this probability, okay? okay. So if I find out the probability for x is greater than or equal to 9 as 0. 75. So this 0 okay. 0.75 shows you that obviously by looking at it, we can tell that if this area is 0 5%, 7.5% would obviously obviously be greater than this area. Yeah. Yeah, so 9 would be somewhere over here. Hmm. So I can say the probability of x is greater than or equal to 9 is greater than my 5%. Right? Which yeah. is why nine is in the acceptance region. So we accept it's not. Do you understand now? Kind of, but I don't know where the 0 0.75 came from. 0 0.75 is where we calculated. For example, I've given you okay. the binomial. This is yeah, the yeah, yeah. The x statistic probability, they're only going to give you the value. You will have to calculate it. Okay. So when, once I calculate x is greater than, I, I have an upper tail test, so I will calculate greater than 9. Okay. okay. So I will calculate x is greater than or equal to 9, which I got as 0 0.75. Now I will compare 0 0.75 and 0 0.5. 0 0.05 is my critical region. This region is 0 0.05, and I know 0 0.75 is greater than or equal to 9. So uh, mm -hmm. you know 0 0.75 is greater than 0 0.05, right? Yeah. So that means 
that shows that nine would be somewhere outside the critical region, right? Yeah. To be inside the critical region, or if not, if let's suppose the probability of x is equal greater than or equal to nine came as zero point zero one. So if I make a number line now, this is my this is my test statistic. Uh, this is my significance level, which I'm saying is 0 0.05, right? Now I know x is greater. So I, I'm x is greater to 9 would be, I would be looking at this side, right? Mm. Greater than sign, right? So it means I'm going on the right side. So it says greater than equal to 9 is 0.1%. So wherever 9 is, the greater part is 0.1%. So uh, I can see that my 0 0.01 is less than 0 0.05, which shows me that 9 is inside the yellow region. You understand now? Yep. Yeah, are you sure? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Can you do an example? Yes, we will be doing an example. I just need you to under the, understand this first. Then I'll be moving on to an example. It will be clear. Don't worry, uh, Naila. Okay. Now I just need you... Miss Anusha, I can't hear anything you're saying. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I muted by mistake. Okay. So when it's a two-tailed test, Naila, I will be dividing the uh, significance level by two, and it's going to be on both sides. Do you understand okay. that? Yeah. Okay. Now I will be doing an example question, okay? Okay. Okay. Let's do this question. Let's look at this question. This is lambda. Let's look at. Um, okay. I want to look at a binomial question. Okay. Let's do this question first, okay? So you have the question in front of you. Uh, the question says, okay. Okay. All right, let's see the question, Naila. Can you see the question? Yeah, I can. Okay. So the question says, at, at the 2009 election, one upon three of the vot voters in Chington voted for the Citizens Party. Okay. Okay. In the 2000, so let's just keep writing our uh, information down while we're doing the question. So in the 2009 election, do we need a year? Yeah, no, we don't, but it's just for our uh, practice. One upon three voters voted for the Citizens Party, okay? okay? One year later, a research questioned 20 randomly selected voters in Shrington. So N would be 20. Exactly three of these voters said that if there were an election next week, they were to vote for the Citizens Party. So our test statistics, this three is our test statistic. This is the number of voters from the 20 they, they have tested. Okay? okay? So this is our test statistic. 
uh, test at 2.5% significance level, whether there is, so our significance level they've given us 2.5%, whether there is evidence of a decrease in support for the Citizens Party in Shrinkton since the 2009 election. Now, this is the information I have right now. Now, can you tell me, first of all, what, did, what would be my uh, H0? Uh, HR would be P is equal to 1 over 3. Okay, so do you understand, first of all, that this is a binomial question? Did you understand that? No, I didn't. You didn't. Because in uh, Poison, if you have done Poison, you know that the N is very small. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. And in binomial, uh, then we only have binomial left, right? For normal, norm, for normal, they will tell you the question is normally distributed. And if they don't, then to convert binomial into normal, what do we need? N. What is the N has to be greater than 30. NP should be greater than 5. And Q should be greater than 5. And be greater than 2. Yeah. But over here, what is our N? It's 20. So we can't, okay. right? We can't convert it into normal. So we're going to yeah. keep as that binomial, okay? So let's do binomial first. What was our first step? If you can open the steps. Okay, they're open. So our okay. first step was to define the variable. Yes, yeah, so binomial expansion where X follows. What is our n? n is 20. And what is our probability? 1 upon 3. But that not that like stating the distribution? Yes, you're stating the distribution. Okay. Okay. You can also write this as p. You're just saying this, right? This as p. And then you can say, assuming, then you write down your h0 and h1, right? Tell me um, what would my h0 be? Um, p is equal to 1 over 3. Yes. And if you can read the question again, what will be my H1? Can I see the question? Yes. A decrease, so it's less than. Less than, yes. Do you see the question will have a... Uh, um, uh, the question will have probes to tell you where you have yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So P is equal to 1 upon 3 and P is less than 1 upon 3. All right. Now what do we do? We say assuming that H0 is true. H0 is true. We uh, Then the binomial distribution would be equal to 20 and 1 upon 3. Okay. okay. What is that third part? Um, so now you have to state the level and type of test. State the level and type of test. Just give me a minute. Let me shift this over there. Okay, so what is our third part? Uh, state the level and type of test. State the level and type of test. What is the level? The level... Uh, 2.5. Yes, they've given us the significance level as 2.5. And what is our type of test? Uh, one tail. Lower tail? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah lower tail than one tail. Yes. So you just need to write lower tail. Or you can write one tail. Or you can just write like this. One lower tail test. At 2.5%. Okay? Yeah. Okay, now what is the next step, tell me? Um, state the rejection region. Okay, now we have to find out the critical region. Right? Yeah. So how do we find that out now? We just have to convert it into a decimal so that's 0 0.025. Yes. So we will first write down our significance level is 0 
So now, but do you remember I also told you that uh, in discrete distributions, binomial and Poisson are discrete distributions. The yeah. significance level is not equal to the actual critical region. So to find out the true critical region, what do we need to do? We have to find the cutoff value. Trial and error, yes. So let's find out uh, through trial and error. It's a lower tail test, so we'll have to find the lower values. So it's still 20, okay? So we can do uh, x is less than or equal to uh, 1, then x is less than or equal to 2, x is less than or equal to 3. Let's find these values. Or we can just do equals to, so, and then we can add them up. It's your choice, okay? Let's do equal to, okay? So okay. x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3. Tell me the values for this. One second. So you're going to get 20, C 0, 1 upon 3, 20, 2 upon 3, 0. This is how you do every one, right? All of them. Okay, yeah. 20, yeah, tell me the values now. Okay. This is uh two point eight six uh eight to the power of minus ten. Two point eight six eight. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Um. Then the <coughs> this one is times one. Uh, Dana, are you fine with this class being till nine? Because we also have to compensate for one hour of last week. Uh, Naila? Yeah? Are you fine with this class being till 9? Uh, I actually have to go somewhere. Okay, okay, okay. Then I'll just compensate the one hour in the next week or I'll let you know, okay? Okay. Let's do this question and then let's end the class. Okay. Uh, this is 1.147 to the power of minus 8. Into 10 to the power of minus 8. Next. Yeah. And then the next one is 1 over 3 to the power. Um, what's the other value? 2 over 3, right? Yes. Um, this is two point one seven nine to the power ten to the power of minus seven. Oh, can you repeat? Ten, uh, two point one one seven nine six. Yes. Times ten to the power of minus. Minus. Minus seven. Minus seven. Okay. And can you tell me the third one? Yes. Um, yeah. Let's also do four. The third one is 2.616 to the power uh, 10 minus 1 over oh, 6, sorry, negative okay. 6. You want to do 4 as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, 4 is 2.223 times 10 to the power 5. Minus 10 to the power 5? Yeah. Okay. All right. No. Now let's add them and see where we get. We need to get lesser than zero point zero two five, not greater than. Okay. So let's add the first, second, and third. Can you add the first and second first? First, you don't want me to add zero. Yes. Add all of them. Add first and second, zero and one first. Okay, um, uh, it's not working on the calculator. How do I get the 10 sign up? You don't need to get the 10 sign up. You do you see into 10 X in your calculator? Yeah. Yeah, just do that and you put in the 
um, power value with it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I got 1.175 times 10 to the power of minus 8. Okay, so that's less than 0 0.025, right? So let's add that second one as well. Okay. Um, 2.1. Wait, what is, this, what is it less than? It's less than our significance level. 0 0.025. We need to go up to 0 0.025. Okay. Fine. The next one is 2.297 to the power negative 7. Which is also less than this. So let's add the yeah. third one as well. Uh, can I see the value again? Yes. This is also less than. Third one is also less than? Yeah. Okay. Let's add the fourth one. This is also less than. I think, wait. Did we do something wrong? No, we haven't done something wrong. I think we calculated it wrong. What did you get with 3? X is equal to 3. No, like when you added 0, 1, 2, 3, what did you get? I got um, 0 point something. So, sorry, uh, 2 point something, 2.5 something. 2.5 what? One second, let me just minus the last one and then I'll show oh, you. Yeah. I got 2.945 to the power of minus 6. 2.945 to the power of minus 6. No, I think there's something wrong. Wait, let me do it. Let me read the question again. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to use the random effect of the number Alright. So we got uh 2.868 into 10 to the power minus 10 plus 1.147 into 10 to the power minus 8. Then we have 2.1796 into 10 to the power minus 7. And then we have 2.616 into 10 to the power minus 6. Yeah. Then we have 2.223 into 10 to the power minus 1. Um, give me a minute.
Okay, just go up to the value. Okay, you did till here. You got lesser than, right? Yeah. You're getting 2.5 minus. Let's do x is equal to 6, 5, 6, 7. x is equal to 5, x is equal to 6. That means we need to add. We need to add up till 0 0.025. So let's do that. Can you calculate x is equal to 5 for me? Yes, I can. We need to go up to 0 0.025. They've done it incorrectly in over here. Uh, can we keep the class? One second. They've taken the incorrect binomial formula over here. Oh, uh, we can keep the class till nine. We can keep the class till nine. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, tell me x is equal to 5 and 6. It's 1.42 uh, 1 1.43 1.423 to the power 10 minus 4. 10 minus 4? Yeah. And 5? Huh? And x is equal to 6? I'm telling you one second. It's uh, 7.114 to the power yeah. 10 uh, times 10 to the power minus 4. Minus 4? Yeah. Okay, add these now till 6. Tell me what the answer is. Okay, one second. Add all of them. Yeah. Uh, can you can you scroll a bit to the left so I can see the numbers? Okay, thank you. Did you go back? Yes. Yeah. One point. It's eight point seven eight seven to times ten to the power of minus four. 8.787 10 to the power minus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0. Not the value has to be greater than 0 0.025, right? Um, if it's, uh, no, it needs to be in 0 0.025. That close to it. Yes, close to lesser than, not greater than. It can be less than it, but it cannot be exceeded. Okay. I don't know what's happening. Do you want to check, like, from the middle? Um, you cannot wait. In this question, can you see over here what they've done is they've done and put in the binomial expansion incorrectly right yeah because they were taking for zero one two three and over here they put in for 19. they shouldn't be 19. Do you remember the binomial formula? Are we putting that incorrectly? I don't know. No, it, you're right. It's, uh, wait. I think the binomial is right, but I'll open it just wait. Okay. So let me tell you. It's.
it's n x and then p to the power of x and then q to q n minus x. Oh, we're putting yes, the formula. We're putting it the down. other way around. That's what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then let's do it again. Okay. That's what I've been confused about since the beginning. I think I got confused. Okay. So let's just do one, two, three, four. The n value is 20, right? Yes. The n value is 20, right? Yes. And the... The formula for binomial is... I don't know how I got confused. So it's NCR. Okay, this is 3.007 10, 10 to the power of, um, okay, it's fine, I'll write it down. Just tell me. Uh, uh, 3.007. Yes. Uh, times 10 to the power of minus 4. Okay. The next one is uh, 3.007, same thing, but to the power of minus 3. Okay. And the next one is, it's 0 0.0143. Okay. And the next one is, The next one is zero point zero four two nine. Zero point zero two nine? No, zero point zero four two nine. Okay. Now if you see here, I think it's going to be enough because it's zero point zero two five. You'll have to stop here. Okay. Okay, so can you add one uh, one, two, three for me, zero one two for me? And also add three. Okay. It's Basically, zero point zero six zero five. Zero point zero six zero five. Zero point zero six zero five. That's so what above it. This, what have we calculated over here, Naila? If that's above it. Here, yes, wait. What have we got? Uh, we could have calculated the critical. Uh, but the value before that, right before that, is zero point zero one seven six. So I think that's it. Okay, so uh, can you see uh, Naila? Yeah. Uh, either you can, okay, this is 0 0.0605. Okay, just let this be over here. Uh, give me the value for 0, 1, and 2. Uh, I know I found the value for the cutoff. It's 0 0.0176 and it's uh, x is equal to 2. Okay, 0 0.0176. Okay, so this is my cutoff value, okay? Yeah. Okay, this is my cutoff value. So I know that my, uh, this is my cutoff region. X is greater than, less than, equal to 2, right? Yeah. This is my critical region. Yeah. yeah. So the, uh, the X statistic value that they've given us is X is equal to 3, right? Yeah. We did not write that down, but over here, can you see? They're saying three out of the 
three out of the twenty voters. So three is our cutoff value. Okay. You see, so three is our cutoff value. So if two is over here, and this is my critical region, so three is going to be outside the critical region, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I'm going to say, I'm going to tell, uh, say that x is equal to 3 falls outside the critical region, which is x is less than or equal to 2. Therefore, do we reject H0 or accept it? Um, wait. This is, this is my, this, uh, Cutoff value shows my rejection region. Yeah. So three is falling outside the rejection region. So we uh, reject H and accept H naught. Why would we accept? Uh, we accept H naught, right? Yeah, that's what I said. Yes, we accept H naught and we reject a and reject H one. Okay. Yeah. So what are we accepting? Basically, we are saying we're accepting the claim. We're saying that it's true. Yes. Uh, we're saying that there hasn't been a decrease in support. Yes, yeah? there has not been a decrease in support, right? Yeah. The voters have stayed the same. Okay. Yeah. So this was one way of doing this question where we found out the rejection region. Another mm -hmm. way would have been to do this was basically we did it with the uh, critical uh -huh. value, critical region method, right? Yeah. Where we find out the cutoff value. Okay. We can use another method, which we talked about, where we can use the significance value. Significance value. Uh, we can use the significance value okay, and right? compare it with the X statistic probability. How do we do that? Like we were. So first we find out the X statistic probability, which is X statistics was X is equal to three. Right? So this is my number nine. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. my number nine, and I'm saying my cutoff value is somewhere over here. Let's say A is my cutoff value, and this is my this is going to be my critical region, critical region, which has the probability of 0 0.025, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So for, uh, let's see how, what is the probability of X is less than or equal to 3. For Let's say 3 is somewhere over here. So let's say what's the probability of X is less than or equal to 3, which I think in this case we found out to be 0 0.60605. Okay, 0 0.0605. This was the probability of less than or equal to 3. So this shows that the probability of x is less than or equal to 3 is greater than my significance level, which is 2.5%. Correct? Yeah. This shows that if this is 2.5%, obviously, uh, how much percent is this? 6.05%. So 6.05% is going to be somewhere outside, right? Mm. So 3 will be outside the critical region as it's greater. So we accept H0. This okay, is but what if we didn't know the value of it at 3? No, you will always know the critical region value, the test statistic value. Wait, can you repeat the other method? I didn't really understand. This method is something we were talking about over here. This method. We've already talked about this. Uh, but can here. you just go over it again one time? Yes. Um, okay. So basically, This is my number nine. Yep. Let's say this is A, my critical value, which I don't know. 
and they mm -hmm. saying the critical region has a probability of 0 0.025 yeah. or 2.5%. So x less than equal to a is equal to 2.5%. Yeah. Yeah. Now they've given me the te test statistic x is equal to 3. Whenever they mm -hmm. give you a test statistic, you will find out the probability of whatever the test you're doing. So I'm doing a lower tail test, right? So I'm yeah. going to find out the probability of x is lesser than equal to 3 because it's a lower okay. tail. Okay. So then I will find this probability out, which we found out to be 0 0.0605. Or yeah. I can also write it as 0.6.05%. Now logically, Dana, tell me if this area is 2.5%. So 6.5% has to be greater than this area, right? Yeah. So x is less than equal to 3 if it's 6.5%. So 3 should be somewhere here for this whole thing to be 6.5%. And yeah. if it's 3 is somewhere over here, this means that 3 is outside the critical region, right? Yeah. So this means I accept H0. Because it's uh, six because zero six point zero five is greater than three uh, is greater than two point five exactly. Yes, yes, yes. So basically, what happens is you can just uh write this down, which I made you write down in the previous lecture as well. Um, just write this down. This will follow in all questions. If my probability of less than equal to x status x test value, whatever test value they've given you. This is for okay. a lower tail test. How do you know this is a lower tail test? Because there's a less than equal to sign. Is yeah. lesser than the significance percentage? I will, in this case, reject H0. You know the logic behind it? This is the logic behind it, okay? Okay. Now, However, if my x status test statistic value probability of the test statistic value is greater than the significance percentage, again for a lower tail test, yeah, I will accept, accept it. Not. Yes. On the other hand, for a upper tail test, this all stays the same. But my probability of x is great. this becomes greater than equal to okay because it's an upper tail. Okay. 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 This stays the same, however, if it's lesser than my significance percentage, I will accept, accept. H0. H0, the theory remains the same, okay. But okay. if it is x value probability is less than test value is greater than significant percentage, I reject H not. You understand? Yeah. The theory is this and it remains the same. So this was a binomial question. I will be doing more questions. I don't want you to do any questions on your own right now because I think you'll get confused. We will okay. come in the next class. We will do more questions, okay? Okay. okay. Today, we took a two-hour class. I, I, uh, can you take a two-hour class on Sunday as well? Yeah, sure. Yeah? So, we can practice yeah. questions, okay? All okay. right. Perfect. Okay. okay. Naila, okay. did you understand today's concepts? Yeah, I actually did. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Just do me one yeah. favor. Before yeah. you come to the class on Sunday, just revise everything and come, Okay. 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 Thank you. Can you send me some exam questions to do on like binomial and normal distribution? Yes, yes, and yes. Yes, I will. I will. I will okay. send them to you by tomorrow. Inshallah. Okay. Thank okay. you. So no problem. Bye. -bye.